spring. Go live. Go live and do that again. Hey everyone, can you hear me? Tom's, oh Tom, there you, you were frozen for a sec, Tom. <laughs> um, let's dive in. So uh, it, it's been a while since we've done one of the uh, Zoom COVID uh, uh, press briefings, but uh, given the um, uptick in cases, we wanted to check in with folks and uh, and make sure that we were um, we were letting people know what's going on. Um, so we've seen, uh, as you know. Uh, uptick in cases in the state and a slight uptick in New Haven as well. Um, I wanted to share some overall numbers with you all. Uh, so uh, throughout the course of the virus, we've had in New Haven a total of 3,205 uh, positive cases with um, a total of 684 people hospitalized over the, uh, over the pandemic and 113 fatalities. And uh, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, just a caveat, so the numbers aren't always uh, perfectly accurate because we get uh, the numbers in kind of batches from the state, um, but this uh, graph gives you an overview of New Haven's cases over the course of the pandemic on the blue line, the state's cases on the gray line, and uh, the fatalities that we've had in New Haven. And obviously the state's cases are much higher. Um, the right uh, axis here is the state numbers and the left axis is the city's numbers. But you can see the state's been increasing at a, um, a slightly faster rate of new cases than uh, the city has, but nevertheless, we've, we've experienced uh, recently an uptick in cases. Also wanted to share some updated uh, demographic data. Um, and this, largely mirrors what um, we've been seeing all along as far as the breakdown of uh, race, race and ethnicity and positive cases. So there's three of these slides. This first one, um, and for folks that used to be, or were on these calls uh, in the past, these are the same that we've always shared. Uh, these are um, positive cases that we've seen throughout the pandemic. Hospitalizations. in fatalities. Uh, something really important to underscore is that um, by and large people have been very good at wearing masks and social distancing. Um, however, we've seen a little bit of sloppiness and I think that uh, there's been a lot of frustration um, and uh, I think people are getting tired of uh, having to abide by pretty strict um, guidelines. And I just wanna encourage people that we've gotta stay the course and focus and make sure that we're continuing, even though it may be difficult to do, continuing to do uh, everything we can to keep each other safe. Uh, we've also noted, and uh, the CDC has noted that um, kind of small house gatherings uh, have contributed significantly to the uptick in the number of cases that we're seeing around the nation. Uh, so people just have to be really careful um, and continue to be vigilant. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Director Bond to uh, give a couple updates as well. So good afternoon um, and thank you for taking part in this update for the city of New Haven. Um, into, um, in addition to the mayor's comment in talking about um, gatherings, as you know, we are approaching, um, we are in the midst of fall and approaching uh, many different holidays um, and many individuals um, have been inquiring about the celebration of Halloween. And so we are issuing 
a guidance from the New Haven Health Department and part of the city on what's permitted and not permitted um, and what we're recommending. And so we are really asking individuals to be cognizant um, and vigilant of what's happening in regards to cases. Um, we are not permitting large gatherings and are asking individuals to please adhere to the governor's executive order regarding events. We are not recommending door-to-door uh, -door trick or treating um, because it's really difficult to maintain proper social distancing on porches and front doors and ensuring that individuals um, are going to be um, at minimal risk of spreading or um, con contracting COVID-19. So we are not recommending door-to-door. -door. We are asking um, that we also adhere to the trunk retreating where children will go to, from car to car um, instead of door-to-door. -door. We are also not recommending that um, particularly because it is also difficult um, and we are trying to avoid crowding and gatherings of small groups and of sharing of food. We are recommending and we uh, hope that you, um, as you're celebrating um, the fall um, uh, events and holidays, especially the one that's coming up for Halloween, is that you um, get creative and think of things such as online parties or contests um, that can be a virtual, um, car parades that comply with the public health guidance um, for vehicle-based parades, and drive-by events, um, contests, um, or individual dress up or decorate, um, decorate your vehicles, um, drive-through events that may be coming up, um, like a drive-in movie, um, having a movie night, uh, or things of that nature, um, Halloween themed meals, um, or outdoor restaurants, and of course, um, whichever you partake um, virtually um, or in um, one of the recommended um, the recommendations that we just provided, we ask that you continue to um, wear pers a personal protection measures. Those are so critical and remain the basic principles in remaining safe. So correctly wearing your mask and um, covering your nose and mouth, avoiding any confined spaces and actively staying um, a minimum of six feet from each other avoiding um, washing your hands and sanitizing um, your hands often and cleaning frequently and any touched items regularly. And if you're sick, please stay home. We're asking um, that we are also in the flu season, um, that if you are symptomatic of a cold sense, any cold symptoms, um, we ask that you please remain indoors and um, try to um, follow the necessary over-the-counter precautions and contact your physician should your um, symptoms develop or worsen. We have credible um, recommendations for resources at the City of New Haven COVID-19 page. Our Department of Public Health um, also issued some guidance and recommendations. And of course, our Center for Disease Control has also issued um, guidance. And so if you have any questions, as always, the New Haven Health Department is at your service and can be reached at our hotline, 203-946-4949. Do you have anything else to add, Dr. Uh, Ron? So in addition to that, um, it, we have been continuously working to track um, cases within the uh, city of New Haven. Um, as the mayor mentioned, uh, there um, has been a slight uptick in cases. And so we've been working diligently with the colleges um, in our area uh, within any potential clusters and we're um, supporting contact tracing efforts. Um, we have also uh, continued to monitor cases um, in nursing homes as well as um, ensuring that we continue our messaging um, and supporting uh, flu clinics within uh, the city. Um, we ourselves are providing a number of flu clinics throughout um, New Haven, and we ask that you visit our website so you can get connected to a local uh, flu clinic. So we ask and encourage um, everyone to, to do that. Um, with that, I don't have any other updates at this time. Okay. Uh, any questions from folks? Looks like uh, both Mary and Tom have questions. Mary's trying to talk. You're on mute, Mary. Okay. There you I'm go. About the homeless, if um, if that's an issue and where people are going, if you want to set up um, places for them, uh, if people are getting sick again, and what's the um, Right. I think that it's probably best for us to get you a specific update from Dr. Dalal and his team um, because it is something that, uh, you know, we're working on as winter approaches uh, and concerns about um, making sure that uh, people stay safe. Uh, there's still a lot of people that are in hotels 
Um, however, there's increased pressure uh, because of housing issues um, uh, that our, our ability to house everyone is a major concern of ours. And it's been a much larger conversation that Dr. Dalal is having with the state and regional partners. Uh, we'd be happy to get you a more specific update on the direction that we're taking. Thanks. Yep. Tom? Thanks very much for taking my question. Um, I appreciate y'all sharing that that graph at the start. I was just taking a look at my screenshot of it, but could you, and for sharing the total positive cases, hospitalized and fatalities in the city, but could you speak a bit more to, you described a recent increase, um, maybe week to week or over the past couple of weeks or month, you know, what, um, can you tell us how, how sharp has this recent increase been and what do you think is causing it? And so I, do you want me to take that one? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, so, you know, for us, we, um, when we're talking about a slight uptick, we're looking at the last 14 days um, and um, we've seen a slight fluctuation. Um, and I think the mayor mentioned some of the, the reasonings and um, what we've been seeing um, with our contact tracing efforts. It's, so there's been small gatherings of individuals getting together and um, increased activities um, indoors, as well as um, some um, not being vigilant uh, with proper PPE and wearing your mask and wearing it correctly at all times. And so we sort of have been seeing that. And then we had you know, some minor clusters that we've been closely monitoring as well um, within the city um, in regards to our recent um, uh, cluster within the local university um, that was announced uh, previously. So, um, so that's sort of what we've been seeing. And um, for the last 14 days specifically, we have uh, approximately 63 cases. Um, that's relatively smaller than the other urban cities across the state. However, um, we were on just two weeks prior, we were at 20 cases. And so we're just closely monitoring it. Um, we are still within um, slow disease growth within the uh, threshold, um, but we just want to be cognizant because ac across the state we're seeing a jump um, and we also seen an increase in hospitalization um, regarding um, inpatients uh, with COVID-19. Thank you, Director Bond, for that. That was very helpful. Um, Cor could you also correct speak? Me, correct me if I'm wrong, that. Director Bond, but there's, there's no um it, it, one incident or two incidents that are causing spread it's just general community spread that we're correct seeing. community wide spread and i ha i have um let me sh let me share this and make sure that uh direct director bond this is, so this is from our uh, system in the last two weeks the the um age uh, differential of the cases mm -hmm. that we're getting and it's clear that the 25 49 year old range is the most uh, cases that we're seeing, 59% of the new cases are in kind of the younger uh, group of folks. I have kind of a similar question. This is uh, Alex Putterman from the Hartford Current. Um, it looks like according, according to the state numbers that uh, the city uh, went up by like 50 cases all of a sudden over the weekend from Friday to Monday. I was wondering if there was any reason for that, if that was backdated data or something or, or what happened there? I think the, the mayor stated it very clearly. Sometimes we get these data dumps that come into our system. And so if there's a slight lag. Um, I know that there was a, um, del a slight delay with the, uh, uh, specifically with one of the labs that caused um, us to just get this uh, slight delay. Um, nevertheless, uh, we were certainly tracking in. We're also tracking it through the hospitalization inpatient rate. So what's the latest on hospitalizations? I'm sorry if you already said that, but how have the hospitalization numbers changed recently? Um, so we've seen a slight increase in hospitalizations across the state um, as the governor has recently announced. And then we currently, um, our hospitalizations, I'm just pulling it up really quickly. Um, we have approximately, just pulling it up. Just wanna give you the accurate number. Um, here we are. So we had we have about 26 in-house patients, of which five are um, in the ICU. And just about a week ago, um, we were about 12. Um, October, about October 4th, we were seeing 12, and then now we're at 26, which is about 10 days later. Got it. And when you guys referred to one of the local universities, were you talking about the University of New Haven? Um, actually, we were not. We were, I was okay. referring to Yale University. 
So Yale had a uh, sports. Yeah. yeah, Yale had a sports team that had, I believe, it was six positive cases. Got it. Um, Be because I I know there have been a lot of cases at UNH, and I know that that campus is not in the city. But I was wondering if that had any sort of impact on on the city of New Haven. Uh, we have not. That that actually that that's a good question. Um, we have not necessarily seen that through our contact tracing efforts. And I had just just one more question. Um, obviously, as the weather is getting colder and people are starting to move activities indoors, do you think that that will, um, or maybe already has begun to cause some amount of increase in COVID transmission? Oh, so we know that indoor air quality is, you know, is, cru is crucial um, and, uh, you know, limited with ventilation. So there is a concern there with the increased um, indoor um, gatherings. And so we ask individuals to, to really try to avoid large gatherings and uh, adhere to um, sector rules when they are frequently um, visiting um, any potential, you know, restaurants or other events that they're attending to make sure that they're adhering to the sector rules um, and making sure that they follow the basic principles for safety. Actually, I lied. I have one more question, if you don't mind. Um, Tom, Tom Breen does it all the time. <laughs> Um, I've, I've already asked the mayor this, but I was wondering, Director Bond, if you had any thoughts about whether um, schools being closed had contributed in any way to um, New Haven's COVID numbers remaining relatively lower than other cities. You know, I think it is a variety of things. I think is uh, one contributing factor for certain. Um, I think uh, there there are other things that have played a role. Um, our city has taken. Uh, extreme measures to ensure that we have a COVID-19 task force and we do a lot of education um, and are out weekly um, to at different establishments um, that we license to ensure that they um, are aware of the se sector rules and um, provide education to them. So I think there's a number of things that have contributed. Um, and so I don't want us to say isolated to that being a, a major contributing factor, but definitely played a role. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. And, ju and just to clarify my statement, Tom Breen always has one more question. Tom Breen does not always lie. <laughs> Tom Breen doesn't, <laughs> doesn't lie at all, but I can see how someone can misconstrue my, misconstrue my statement, statement. Tom Breen has a lot of questions, which is a great thing. Any more questions? Kyle, go for it. I guess I, I, guess I just have one question. It Oh. Have uh, any restaurants or businesses been closed or uh, cited by the city because of violations? What's your question, Mary? Uh, of the COVID rules. H have we given My citations is, or closed they, any restaurants right, or businesses, businesses because of the inspections that you've done? Um, yes, and um, we don't, not because of the weekly uh, inspections, it, it really varies. Um, we do have a system in place, um, warning systems and um, depending on the imminent risk to the public, but we have certainly closed establishments um, for a number of violations. All right, I'd love to get that list. And you know, how many people, how many, how long are they closed once you do it? I mean, is there a re-inspection process protocol, I guess, right? If they would reopen again? Yeah, so typically um, when someone um, is deemed closed for, um, for whatever violations they have, um, they do have to work on a corrective action plan on how they're gonna to adhere to the sector rules or um, redirect them to ensuring that they're, if it's a health violation regarding food or other, um, they will have a corrective action plan and their closure will depend upon um, ensuring that they adhere to um, uh, com complying with either the health sector rules, building, fire marshal, so it really varies on a case-by-case -case, uh, situation on how long they're closed. All right, so we can get that information. You can make, you can certainly make a FOIO request, of course. Well, we can get, we, we can get you the information. <laughs> we can get you the information. Um, uh, Kyle, uh, oh, Mary, you had something else? Uh, when you spoke about Yale, is the only report you're, what you're speaking about is this the uh, athletes, the six students? That's Correct. The, and um, but on a routine basis, okay. we work closely with all the universities um, just to provide support um, as that's part of the reopening guidance. And so we um, have an, a good relationship with each of the universities. Thank you. You're welcome. Kyle. 
Hello, everyone. Um, I just have a question about um, the testing efforts. I know I'm, I'm wondering, is the city starting to plan um, to moving back towards sort of the model that was out in the fall where we had um, multiple testing sites throughout the city? Um, I know that uh, the schools have testing sites now. So if you could talk a little bit about how you're preparing for the fall, if we're starting to ramp up testing again. Do you want me to answer that, Mayor? Oh, uh, sure. Okay, so our, we, have never, we have never scaled down. We actually um, kept our testing model the same. Um, we did see fluctuation in numbers and um, in the demand for testing, but we wanted to make sure that testing um, uh, capacity was still in place um, and availability for um, individuals that want to get tested. Um, we have a testing logistics team. We worked very closely um, with our testing partners to identify any potential gaps and provide support in those gaps and then have expanded, as you know, um, we announced yesterday um, at the Board of Ed meeting our schedule for uh, testing at the different schools and making it available um, for the communities um, and individuals that would like to get tested at one of those sites. So we will, we are continuously working in those efforts and feel that testing is criti of critical importance and we'll continue to monitor hotspots in our city and um, continue to expand as needed um, and support pop-up testing sites as well as community, many community agencies um, have events and they often invite um, you know, and, and, and offer testing at these different community events. So we're really um, grateful uh, for all of the different stakeholders that are involved in this process. And we've also um, thankfully seen an increased capacity by a number of entities. The hospital's doing a lot more testing as are the federally qualified health centers. And um, early on in the uh, pandemic, there was not uh, the availability of the kind of asymptomatic testing, but all those entities are now doing asymptomatic testing as well. So it just gives us a lot more flexibility to um, provide more options because of those partnerships. The hospitals, for example, have been doing um, uh, pop-up testing with their RV on the, uh, on the green, as, just as one example. And they're doing a lot of the testing uh, along with our um, our partners at the federally qualified health centers at the schools for the upcoming month. Okay, so um, so it sounds like the model has sort of, as you've said, stayed the same, but just the um, I guess execution's a little bit different because yeah. um, is there still like the Chapel and Day Street site or Lincoln Mass that I know was a site before? Have those kind of changed too? So we just, um, you know, as discussed, we sort of modify locations um, as the as we monitor the hotspot. Stay in Chapel is currently. Um, um, available. Um, there's also a Yale public testing site. Um, we've expanded now. Yale has one at Strong School. So some of them just locations just have fluctuated um, as we've evolved and expanded. Gotcha. And the so we, I want to mention, sorry, that um, our COVID-19 testing schedule is on the website. And so we invite individuals to the New Haven COVID-19 testing site to stay up to date on the different schedules that we provide each week. Gotcha. Okay, great. And the school testing site is um, open to the community, right? It's not just correct. Students. Okay. Um, and then my last question for schools, I guess, would be for uh, maybe Mr. Pinto. Um, how are the schools getting ready? I mean, I know we took 10 weeks to, um, you know, get them set and prepared. How are we, how are we looking with uh, in person? Uh, we are, as of last night, with the Board of Ed affirmed that it is uh, reopening on the hybrid model on November 9th. Uh, that's the Monday, uh, 10 weeks from, you know, from August 31st, which was the start of school. Well, the first four official day, although students were actually only online as of that, the 12th, I believe. Um, I'm sorry, not the 12th, I'm sorry, the third, my mistake. Um, the... Uh, we have been focusing on, we've been working with the COVID uh, task force, which has included uh, Director Bond's department, the uh, building department. Um, also, we've had input from the Yale School of Public Health, uh, Yale, the uh, Office of Policy and Management that oversees school construction. Um, we have gone through with Maritza and with uh, her team uh, effectively with a fine tooth comb, we're making sure that we have, you know, everything from, you know, the signage, floor signage, uh, one-way markers, uh, entry and exit only signage, uh, room capacity signage, 
social distancing signage, elevator uh, capacity signage. Um, in bathrooms, we are turning off you know, every other stall effectively and reducing, uh, reducing uh, usage in bathrooms, turning off every other sink to ensure we have social distancing for people when they're using the bathroom. Uh, lockers won't be used this year, so you know kids will be carrying their bags, and you know we're zip tying all of the zip tying all the lockers off. Um, we're in the process of finishing up uh, our, you know, the the final uh, five or six uh, uh, isolation rooms that we need to finish off. Um, the we had to do, you know, also I mean, we had to identify rooms, and in some cases we had to modify the door. Uh, the requirements are that the door have a window in it so that the, the student can be, uh, if necessary, or the, the symptomatic person can be uh, isolated, but then also un, you know, maintain observation um, you know, while still being separated from the other, uh, uh, from staff. Um, so we're finalizing, finalizing those. Uh, we are in the we have Fuss and O'Neill on board who are doing evaluations of all of the HVAC systems. Uh, so far, all of them have come back uh, in working order. Um, we are doing some additional duct, I mean, they have identified uh, some ventilation cleaning and uh, we are in the process of, uh, we're scheduled to ha take delivery of MERV 13 standard filter systems that will be installed. We have them installed in about seven schools currently, uh, just because they arrived earlier. Um, and we're in the process of, uh, we're expecting uh, towards the end of this week, the, uh, the delivery of the remaining uh, 35 odd school, and we will have additional staff on to make sure those are installed as soon as we receive them, uh, like the beginning next week. Um, and so that's where we stand. I mean, we're in the process of, we're closing, we're finishing up where we stand on, on, the, uh, on the setup. There are some, some final things that we need to do at most of the schools, but we're confident they'll be ready on November 9th. Does that answer your question, Kyle? Yeah, I think so. It sounds like um, you're making progress and, and uh, according to uh, the school board meeting last night, everything sounds like it's on track for in-person learning. That's correct. I would, yeah, cor um, correct me if I'm wrong, but there are um, eight schools that are ready to go right now and all of the other ones are on track. Um, it, the entire team has uh, made clear that if any of the schools are not ready, meaning they haven't uh, checked uh, all the boxes on the checklist of things that uh, need to be done for safety, uh, then that particular school would not open it as they continue to finalize um, the safety measures. Okay. And those learning hubs will stay open in case parents want to keep using those. Correct. Uh, so, and that's important because in the hybrid model, there's still some days of online learning. Uh, and, and so the learning hubs provide an, an added um, support for parents. And all of the, uh, and all parents have the option or all families have the option to remain in remote, uh, if they feel more comfortable in the remote uh, fun and the remote learning, they can do that. Um, obviously, it's a little different if you're going to a hub. Presumably, you'd also feel comfortable about going to a school. Um, but yeah, so some students will be will be will remain online uh, in remote and remote learning, and then there will be cohorting. The AA basically Monday Tuesday will be one cohort, the A cohort, and then. Uh, Thursday, Friday will be the B co the B cohort. Okay. Um, the younger grades will actually like the K through three will actually be going all all four days. Wednesday will be a deep cleaning day, so that we will as we clean between the cohorts. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, Kyle. Go ahead, Tom. Thank you. Um, First, I just want to say I always love and appreciate when you all do these. So thank you for doing another one of these virtual updates. I really find it invaluable and I know our readers do too. So um, so thanks for doing that and I hope uh, that there are more to come. Uh, and my only question is about 
any city plans for outdoor dining, if you have any to share as the weather gets colder? Obviously, a lot of restaurants have um, taken up a fair amount of sidewalk and street space uh, during the warmer months. But do you, Mayor, Director Bond, um, do you have anything you can say right now about what the city's planning to do when it starts snowing or getting very cold um, in terms of outdoor dining? The short answer is stay tuned. We're actually having a pretty lively conversation within City Hall about how to support businesses because it's a, to Director Bond's point earlier, as people are forced to go indoors, there's just more potential for spread of the virus. And so um, we're working with the team to try to provide op options to restaurants and be more flexible, um, but don't yet have a finalized plan for that. Okay, that's it for me. Thanks so much. Yep. Anything else? Okay, thanks everybody. We it, we um, will try to do these more frequently. It's mostly that we kind of get distracted and there's so many things going on, but uh, I appreciate your feedback, Tom, that these are helpful and we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to do them more frequently. Good to see you all. Take care. Thank you all.